Okay, so I just want to just quickly summarize here uh, with this foam. So you can see that there is a layer of acrylic paste that was coated over this foam here because I wanted the softer kind of stone look and it takes paint much better than just the foam does unless you pre-paint this with a really good uh, flat white or light gray acrylic paint just to coat and cover up a lot of the um, porous quality of the foam because it'll suck the paint up until it's sealed. So you can seal this with any acrylic medium really and then base coat it your your base rock color and then put washes on it and it looks fantastic. So it's up to you. Um, so you can see that there's a layer right here of cell clay. See how tough that is? Like all over top of the foam. It's only one eighth inch. Okay. So you can drill a hole and mount a tree into the foam core easy at will. If you want to adjust a tree to here, you want it closer to the cliff leaning over, you can go like that. You can move it back here if you want, right? That's the reason for my madness with cell clay over foam and acrylic, right? It's so easy to revise and to compose a scene because scene composition sometimes will just be one line. Like you could have a tree like, like you could have a tree right here like that, right? But then what happens when the tree is leaning just a bit? Right, it, it, it shifts the scene. So that's the beauty. So you can kind of do this all day long, right? You know what I mean? That's the beauty of it. Try and do that with uh, hard shell scenery over cardboard. Good luck with that, okay? And plus the, this is super lightweight. There's no plaster. The, this is just paper mache, really cell clay. So that's why I use this method. Okay, it's a type of hard shell over top, but not all of it. Like a lot of this is just foam painted with acrylic paint, this rock work. Just grab photos, whatever the area that you like, and just draw lines on it with felt pen. I, I do that sometimes, but this here is easier to do because I can follow this strata, see? Like I know, like I want this angle, this strata going, so I'm playing off it with this here. And, uh, you know, like uh, right here I can go, okay, well maybe I'll just... Take a little sliver out of that. See? See that? And just a wash in there when you paint it, it just mirrors this here, see? So once you get it started, like one area, and then you just start chasing it along, it actually isn't that difficult. Like, it's hard to go wrong and you can have fun, but try to stay away from just a crisscross symmetrical. Try to look at your, your underground geology in this sense as plates because that's what they are. They're shifting rock plates, you know. So this here, like, I, I wasn't really going to do this, like, outcrop, but I kind of like it now for a couple of reasons. I might put a building up here, like an old, decrepit cabin or, you know, just as a visual interest or a meadow for Bullwinkle. <laughs> He's going to He's decided, well, should I go up through here or cut across? Anyway, and then I'm going to build up rock slide like here a little bit, right? You know what I mean? And then maybe leave another shelf. Because they do that a lot in BC. They cut shelves out of, out of uh, well, they have been the last 20 years or uh, 25 years now. Well, actually, maybe a little further back along the Squamish 99 Highway, they do a lot of the shelving thing. Because they can grow stuff rather than just a slope. So that's kind of where I'm heading with this, just feeling it as it goes, and then just sort of establishing, you know, some shape and believability on the, uh, on this edge of the particular island as I transition down into this backdrop, which I'll also show how I built this as well, okay? Okay, so I want to show you this now. This is the fast mesh, and it's not exactly the same as cell clay, although uh, it's the same kind of commercial paper mache, but it has a different quality to it. It's not sticky and gummy like cell clay, and I really like it for doing overhangs on uh, rock faces and just leveling and stuff. 
it'll stick really good to foam, but it doesn't have that glue-like tendency. And you can get your hands into it. It doesn't like just, you know, feel like muck. Like it actually rolls off your hands much easier. It's hard to explain, but when you use it, like uh, you'll see the difference. So this is the easiest part I find for scenery and the biggest payback. Like anyone can do this. Like here, look, you just lay it on like cake icing and you just spread it like this, see? Leave it a bit thick on the edge there because you want some overhang of turf, right? Like this rock was blasted here. And this is the way it looks, at least out here it does, uh, when they blast highways and right-of-ways and etc. You get this sort of turf overhang. And you can walk away and leave this for a while if you have an emergency or whatever. You don't have to worry about it. It's not going to set up too fast for you. In fact, it'll stay moist and workable for several hours and then some, depending how much water you put in it initially. See, it's just so easy to, uh, to just spread out. Like it's just, and it has the most beautiful earth-like texture on its own without even trying. And it takes paint well. And if you lay, like paint it dark brown and then put washes of earth like Tamiya or acrylic water base, it looks like this. That's only one sixteenth thick of this. It dries a hard shell and it's got a beautiful earth-like texture and takes paint. It doesn't need anything really if you're just doing bare, like just, you know, bare groundwork. So I'm just going to move some of this around and then I'm going to stick my, uh, it's going to be loose rock in here. I'm going to stick my retaining wall in here, but you know what? I'm not going to put anything on the back to lock it in. In fact, I want this uh, retaining wall to pop off, I think if it wants to, because I want to be able to adjust it because this will shrink. Like when this settles in, the foam has a little bit of a shrink rate and so does the cell clay. So if I fix this wall on here and this uh, foam decides to do this, I'll exaggerate. Watch, pull up. Then what am I going to do with this ugly edge down here? So I'm going to just put cell clay in behind here. Just so I can create a bit of a barrier when uh, matte medium seeps down in through the riprap and rock that I'm going to put in there. I'm just going to push that in there like that. You can get these from artist supply stores, these little paint palette knives. They, they work great for this kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to pack this in here tight against the back wall here too. Now there'll be shrinkage here. It might pull away from this wall a bit and then you can just re and re it with some more the following day. But this stuff, you can just lump it on. It's, and it's really light too, right? but it hard. Like a nice, tough, hard finish. And I just love it. It's really great for doing model railroad or diorama terrain. And even if you drop it on something, a finished, you know, model component, it, it doesn't do nothing to it. It's just... It just pulls away. It just doesn't have a glue-like texture. So I'm going to fill that seam a bit. And if you stab this into foam, it just blends in with it. Like once you paint all this, like you won't even notice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stab that in. And just work it in really fast too. You can cover a lot of ground. Grant over there at Southern Alberta Rail, I think I've mentioned it before. He's got the big, beautiful end scale Canadian uh, railroad there. He's been working on for, oh, I don't know, I think over 20 years, I think. Anyway, he loves this stuff. He uses it all the time. So and he built, he uses it over foam as well for good reason too. Okay, so that's all you have to do, right? And then just work it in and leave it rough. And if you want to smooth it out, 
with a bit of water on your spatula, you can go like this and just smooth it right into a rock chunk or piece. Just go at it with a knife or a brush, light, really light brush. And it's just the cat's meow, this stuff. And then when this tacks up a little bit, I'm going to pull this out over the, like this. See how fast that works? It didn't take long, did it? Okay, so here's just a quick outtake of the retaining wall and the embankment. You can see that the, the uh, fast mash is in place. The wall's sealed up into it. I put a little bit of gravel just from the driveway. Like I've got a whole bunch of sifted different grades. I'm going to build up a little bit and it's going to be quite sandy by the time it hits the back of that retaining wall. Because I want a few trees like a snag or two and a big old maple coming out of there. Which I have yet to build that particular tree for this scale. And then on the top plateau there, there's going to be some more trees a bit smaller. You know, to kind of fair in the corner of the edge of this forest, which goes beyond the backdrop for who knows how far, miles up a mountain, who knows. But it's just the finger of this forest that points out onto the layout, right? That's the idea. And the wall here is, I'm going to leave all this jagged rock in here. There's going to be a little bit more different grades of stone and blast rock all laying in here and then finer sand. Uh, laying up against the back of this retaining wall there and then vegetation. It'll be a really fun little area to model actually. It's finally getting to a stage where I can start to see it shape up. Okay.